said, I think I'm on to something here. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be without it. It did wonderful things for me. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid. Call now. That's 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Yeah, I was curious to see what it looks like from the Facebook Jean live Lindsay side of things. An internationally acclaimed psychic, spiritual healer, author, and founder of the online mystery school, Esoteric University. As the cosmic oracle, she is a conduit to the powers that be to answer your questions about your future self, past lives, current <coughs> career, love. She shines light into the darkness to illuminate what was, what may be, and beyond. The readings and advice given by Barbara Jean Lindsay are for entertainment purposes only. Should not take the place of any medical, legal, or financial advice given to you by a qualified professional and are not a substitute for medical, legal, or financial advice. If you need a doctor, call a doctor. If you need to be expanded, call the Cosmic Order. Hello and welcome everyone to the official, we had a pre-party, a kind of a VIP lounge going on, so <laughs> now, <laughs> so welcome to the Cosmic Oracle Show, this is your host Barbara Jean Lindsay, you are coming uh, to us live, we're coming to you live on Revolution Radio, we have uh, with us today Garrett Duncan, he's, I'm so excited to have him on the show and we're going to have a uh, Hey Yoka Happy hour. Welcome to the show, Garrett. Hi, guys. We've already started that. So just so you know, it was by invitation only. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm going to first uh, help pay the bills here on the station, and that would be that uh, we have a special going on uh, for a $10 donation, and all you have to do is go to revolutionradio.com. That's revolutionradio.com. And for a $10 donation to Revolution Radio, all you do is hit that donate button, and we will send you a PDF automatic download of Thomas Becker. He's our a station manager, and all of us know him as a mad painter. His new book, it's called Ether, and it contains short stories about artificial intelligence, friends, and love, and it's available through October 31st. So that you get $10. When you give $10, you get something back. And that's from um, our dear friend Thomas Painter. And um, you know that we are an uh, all-volunteer station. No one gets paid for anything. We all just do it because we don't have anything else better to do. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's a place where we have a, um, a, a place that we can talk about whatever we want and not be uh, limited to anything. And so we have a, a free, free choice and free talk and free everything here this evening. So anyway, uh, welcome aboard the mothership. And, uh, and I do want to tell you a little bit about Garrett. Uh, just for a moment because, uh, he's very humble. So he's probably, I, we'll see how you take this. <laughs> it's not true. I'm just going to put a disclaimer and say all of what Barbara's going to share with you all, it is not true. <laughs> well, actually, he paid me a quarter. So <laughs> don't say it. Remember when you were a kid? I'll give you a quarter, right? You say that. <laughs> 
So actually, he is bringing forth the languages of the stars. And Garrett Duncan is a Navajo shaman, and he's been designated the role of ambassador to the Galactic and Sasquatch nations. That's a pretty... That's a pretty heavy duty, intense title there. Yes, He's been working. <laughs> yeah. Not everyone could embody that. That takes a lot of power, you know, and just a whole bunch of, we'll get into that. All yeah, right? definitely, He's, definitely. Garrett has been working with the Sasquatch to bring forth telepathic activations along with their teachings surrounding Earth's galactic history. Through their energies, Garrett was activated in speaking several star languages. And we do have a request tonight for uh, Draconian. But he also, already, yeah. And he speaks Pleiadian, Lemurian, Adarian, Sasquatchy, and Andorian. According to the star elders, the vowels from our English language, along with other earthly languages, share commonality. And each of the sounds stand for acceptance, energy, inspiration, outcome, and unify. The star elders have provided channeled tones and encouraged practice through working with the vows. And so he, he has these messages that Garrett Duncan receives through his star languages and he does these activations. When you're around him, you can't help but be activated. So <laughs> welcome to the show. Garrett Duncan, my friend. And, Yay, of course. Yay. Are, you, are, you, are you ready to get activated? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the languages have evolved a lot more. You know, when someone when I have individuals come to me and ask me, So Garrett, you know, what language are you speaking? And I was like, Yeah, I can give you an idea and I can give you the coordinate. And they're like, well, how many languages do you speak? And I said, well, look up. How many stars do you think are just in our Milky Way galaxy? And they're like, oh, well, if you put it that way. Exactly. So not every language is going to sound exactly the same. You know, so different frequencies, different vibrations. And a lot of the times the star nations from different worlds from different planets um they don't even speak the language you know they they communicate telepathically just like sasquatch when you first started this did you what was your first hit like did you just did it come out or what's the, your 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 virgin expression of <laughs> <laughs> of a star was language was initiated quote yes unquote. initiated yes. <laughs> Well, it all started when I have a shot of giggle juice and then I made my way to the woods <laughs> and I was invited aboard the ship <laughs> and I said yes. And the next thing you know, I came back down and I'm at a ton and I started to speak these, the tongues that get Akandra. It was, um, the mother tongue that, that came to me at first was, um, Andorian. Andoria terra induri te mingara te tira. Oratanda reti tiro, hunduria tiri tinga. So Andorian has a, um, energy around a lot of the rolled R, like that frequency comes through. And initially, when I had started speaking Andorian, uh, the, the elders and the guides and helpers just wanted me to communicate very, just keep communicating, keep speaking it, get comfortable. It's like, oh, okay, all right, sure, you know. I wasn't really in the awareness at uh, that point of translation. So they initially were just sharing with me that this is the tongue, this is your mother tongue as they recognize it and the geturo and it was the teacher. It was like a teacher tongue to get me used to speaking, to um, being in this frequency, but also to hold it because when the language has come through, you can only imagine some of the higher in vibrations, the higher intensities. It's so high and elevated and you're trying to squish it into this tiny 3D vessel. So you're like, ah, this is too much, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so that happened um, at the Sasquatch, actually, at the Sasquatch conference um, two years ago when I first went there. Um, someone asked us, oh, I, let me, I should say someone. We had someone who asked Kathleen Whitehead, ask if you could speak Sasquatch because that's, she says she recently had a spiritual Sasquatch communion and she would just be honored if you would 
speak Sasquatch, please. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do when the Sasquatch frequency, just so you know, Barbara, it comes in very loud. So I just want to make sure sound check there. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to move back from my speaker just a little bit here to begin. It's very intense. Okay. okay. So I don't want to blow the circuits. <laughs> oh, thank you. All We're right. not letting that. No. at the same time yes. it's like they want to just grab you and rock you or hold yes. you or something exactly and that's the love frequency that comes through from sasquatch because the energies that they embody are really um loving are very it's almost like you feel very secure and you feel feel very cuddled it's like yeah. oh hi mom hi dad Great, thank you. You know, you're in that embodiment where you just feel very safe. Yeah, I feel that too. And, and, and like, you're almost like they adore you. You know, like when you're a little kid and your parents actually liked you for a moment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Where they think you're cute or something for five minutes, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then they realize, oh, my God, you need your diaper changed. Yes. <laughs> It's so they're like they just kind of adore it. Beautiful, I love that. Yeah. Wow, that was really good. And it's funny because if you were to see me on my end, um, when Sasquatch language, so because um, one of the reasons why it it doesn't come out very clear, like some of these star languages, is because Sasquatch don't have vocal cords. They don't have the vocability, the vocal bulls, the sounds. They can mimic very well, you know, whistles, bird whistles, coyote howls, um, but they can't actually form words because they don't have the chords to do so. And so when they come through in their frequency, in the form of language, it comes off almost very uh, like whale-like. Individuals have said that they feel a very whale frequency that comes in. Um, and when they were training me to speak and to encapsulate these sounds, I was on my way home from the office and it just, it just like hit me really hard. And my mouth was going like, er, this way, er, this way, open, uh or they were like stretching my mouth because I had to have those, you know, high frequencies and I had to squeeze my throat and constrict it a certain way, you know, just to, in, just to hold that vibration. Well, Kathleen Whitehead says thank you and that she is in tears. Oh, see, that's all. That's the love. That's the vibration. Hey, um, heart. Yes. And Sasquatch is, you know, they want us to embody the inner child. They want us for us to be in that purity, you know, to return back to the innocence before all the trauma, before all the responsibility, before all the programming and patterns that don't need to be there. And so a lot of individuals who are wanting to make contact with Sasquatch to connect with them, you know, the easiest way to go about doing that is to really come from your heart, you know, to remember that childlike innocence, the inner child, the inner being of who you are in that playful joyness and that playfulness and that silliness and to explore your curiosity, allowing yourself to go there. And that's where, again, you know, with the, what we were discussing earlier about the Heyoka energy, it puts us back into that space. It's like it gives us permission as adults to be silly, to be playful. And Sasquatch really, really loves that. And it's because, you know, they consider us their younger brothers and sisters. We, they are our elder brothers and sisters. They see us a little bit like um, younger, just in our evolutionary progression. 
And so when they connect with this on the human level, you, know, you feel that just that immense energy of love and that curiosity and that playfulness. And you'll feel your heart, you know, you just feel that heart like, oh, and then, of course, the egoic mind. Sometimes when people hear these frequencies coming through, sometimes the egoic mind actually like, oh, my God, that's scary. That's freaking me out. You know, that's the monster. That's the boogeyman that's in the woods. And, da, 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 and they go running, right? And all it is is that Sasquatch just wanted to say hi, you know? And so those, you know, I get, I get a lot of questions a lot when I go out sharing wisdom from the Sasquatch nations is people always ask me, Garrett, well, how come Sasquatch can't just operate right now? If you tell me that they're, they can operate and they're multidimensional, how come they won't do it? So I go right up to these people and I just go, no! And they're like, ah, they freak out. I go, that's why. Because you still have that human programming that's in your feels, the flight or fight response. And so if you're in either of those modes, then yeah, this is going to sound scary to you and you're going to go running. And all Sasquatch was trying to say to you is, hi, I'm here. I want to be your friend, you know. And so, you know, from that perspective, a lot of the times the humans think that they're ready. And in all reality, nope, <laughs> they're far from. And so one of the exercises that Sasquatch had shared with us is that if you sing, like if you go out and sing a song, it doesn't matter what song, um, you could sing happy birthday and you'd be out at night and sing happy birthday it dissolves all that uh, programming of fear that's affiliated with the night. And when you're in that resonance of that resonance of the heart and the inner child, then Sasquatch tends to come a lot more closer to you. And, you know, if they were to operate right then and there, you wouldn't go running because your heart space is in a different arena. So, so do you think they acclimate you in a way too? Are you acclimated because they don't want to give you too much to fold your mind? Yes, <laughs> because every time Sasquatch has come around me from a physical side of things, like from the 3D body perspective, it's just major. Zzz, that's how it feels. It's like, ah, you guys are too much. You know, your whole body is just shaking so intensely. So I, was like, I have to tell them to tone it down. And it's like, oh, too much, too much, too much, guys, too much, <laughs> you know, and then I'm like bouncing, because <laughs> the intensity of it is just so much. So, yeah, you do have to, you do have to allow for that adjustment period. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fear is really true that it's a, uh, the fear can stop it when you least expect it. You think you've got it all together. And then when it starts to happen, it's kind of like the body goes into a natural program and you have to override it. Exactly. Exactly. And this program has been with us from the dawn of humanity. Initially, the program was there as a survival mechanism. It was there, you know, for survival. And I always share with a lot of individuals that said, yeah, it's always going to be there. It's always part of who we are. It's our, in our mental body. It's connected very much to the ego. And so therefore, if you know, you're wanting to really connect, you have to, you have to go beyond that. You have to work in collaboration and master that energy, master that frequency. So how, so with you, when you first started, you started with the, the first one, Andorian. What was your second one that you were taught? Or you um, like the, oh, it was Arcturian. The Arcturian um, tongue came through and it was very intense. It's a, it's almost like a clicking sound. It's a like that. I was like Arcturian, but it's it's very uh computer like, computer sounding. And and the one thing about the Arcturian energies, that's where my 3D vessels, you know, when I'm speaking it, because it's so fast and the vibration's so intense, I feel like <laughs> I ran a marathon when I'm done con disconnecting with that vibration. Wow. Um, we had Kathleen Whitehead. She says, now I'm wondering what languages I am speaking. How can I know? 
Oh, that's a good question. Um, and that's where the ambassadorship comes in for me. And um, being in this role, it's this more or less being the uh, bridge, really, the bridge, the earthy bridge, the human bridge and connecting to the galactic aspect of we, of us. And um, it would be hard for me to decipher that without listening. So if she were to send me a segment of it and I can hear it, then I can tune into that frequency and I can give her kind of an idea of what's being spoken um, and the awareness around the star system that it's affiliated with. Oh, that's good. So if she needed to get a hold of you, because I know that you do do private sessions with yes. with people the best way for them to get a hold of you is on your Facebook page? Yes, uh, Facebook page, Navajo Illuminations. Um, I actually just posted at ha- Heyoka Happy Hour Special. <laughs> so for all the listeners who are on board, certainly take advantage of this. Um, this is a special that's created specifically for you, and I'll be doing these sessions all next week. And um, in this session, you'll probably most likely get an activation, and this activation is uh, purification rates. So basically what we do in the sessions is we start off, I start off like just a little bit of counseling. So I listen to the concerns, I listen to the struggles, I listen to the fears, and then when it comes time for them to be like, all right, are you guys ready to be done with it? And, you know, of course, they're the way they determine the answer always vibrates out. And um, then I read the activations. It's a numerical sequence of codes that are purification. So they purify. So it's almost like I hit the reset button in their feels. And so they're not hindered by the mother and father trauma bloodlines. They're not hindered by karmic stuff. They're not hindered by past life trauma. So we hit that reset button and then they're able to recreate the reality like basically from a zero point. And so when I start off the um, sessions, initially those activations, I do these purification rates first, and then we continue with the star language after that. So as we bring in the vibrancy, the frequency that is needed for them mostly at that time. And a lot of times what happens is individuals, they start to feel the um the tonalities, you know, the different uh, vibrational sounds that are coming through, they they they'll feel it in their heart, and then their mind is trying to process. Garrett, well, what am what are you saying? What am I saying? What am I trying to understand here? And I always encourage them. I said, don't worry about that part yet. It's don't try to translate. Just feel because the heart already knows. The heart is deciphering what the message is. And then, you know, and then they they walk away feeling very much, very much um, illuminated again. You know, they're like, oh, my God, I feel so good. I feel cleansed. I'm like, yep, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> it's, it's like you uh, reset their soul in the body, right? Correct. It's like the spirit because, you know, we're walking computers, really. And so we have the programming when it comes to the healing, you know, the way I look at it from a galactic side of things, from the perspective of the star nations is that here in our 3D vessel, we have the embodiment of all these different frequencies because we've been there. We've done that and it extends beyond beyond just the rationale of Earth past lifetimes. We go into multidimensional selves that are connected to our galactic lifetimes. Imagine that, right? So all your galactic lifetimes in which we were Pleiadian and in which we were Syrian or Arcturian or Andorian. So you have those facets that are all floating around in your auric field. Now, when it comes time for someone to receive their activations um, from the physical side of things, because we're still in 3D vessel, there's always some type of hindrance, which is correlated to uh, trauma of some sort. So this trauma, inner child work or trauma from past life, trauma from mother and father's lineages. So from the star perspective, one of the biggest things and one of the hindrances when it comes to healing is that you're, we're, we're, we're brought into the awareness that we're not going deep enough. We're not going far enough. And we initially just put, you know, the healing into like we're band-aiding the, um, symptom. But we're not going into the core. And so this has been an awareness that has been brought to attention 
And so what happens is with these activations is we go in very deep. We go into where this program or this pattern, where it first happened. And then we neutralize it from that source. And what happens is it affects the person now. So this intergenerational trauma, they actually have a word for it now, <laughs> psychology wise. They call What's it the, intergenerational trauma. In, in, they, I'm sorry, what trauma is it called? Intergenerational. Intergenerational trauma. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. So this is like a new verbiage, a new word that's been yeah. brought into awareness from the Western side of things, from the Western okay. viewpoint, you know, when it comes to um, disease and conditions. So when we cleanse this up from the energetic side of things, we take these activations, the purification rates, and we go to the core. So we clean it up from there because if everything is energy, then we can vibrate it and neutralize it out. We take it out of the field, you know, and so a lot of the times, you know, individuals after they're done, they walk away like glowing. They're back into their purity. And, you know, that's what I like to call it. Oh, you got your Navajo facelift. <laughs> non invasive. And they're like, oh, my God, I reverse age. I'm like, yeah, you have. <laughs> I absolutely love it because they are, they glow because they're, they're free. You give them their freedom back, right? Exactly. Yep, exactly. So all we're doing is retraining the cells and the quantum, you know, our quantum fields, our auric fields, our cellular memories. We're cleaning them up, but we're retraining them. So we're reprogramming them to embody the new aspect, to embody the new empowerment, the new we, the new energy, the new healing, the new frequency. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. it sounds like more than a, it's like, it's um, very, there's no words for it really, probably. When someone comes out of that, it's like you, you go from one world to a whole nother world, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of the feedback too has been around, you know, catering to that, that, that it changes their life because yeah, you know, the ancestral lines and the mother and father bloodlines has been dictating and determining their reality. But now that we've neutralized that out, they're like, wow, I'm a whole brand new person and I don't know what to do with myself. I'm like, <laughs> well, Go have fun. Start there. <laughs> That's why you're well, here. They to get to be happy again, right? Yes. That's part of it because it gets so serious with pain oh, and suffering. God. That's not a fun, a fun no. thing to do. Oh you my know? God. You know, one of the most weirdest things about Garrett growing up is that when Garrett would stub his toe or Garrett would bang his knee or Garrett would get kicked in the shin or something, I would just fall down cracking up laughing and the more that it hurt, it would just, I would just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And people always thought that was weird. I was <laughs> like, no, this is normal because it helps with the pain. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, That's you know. awesome. We, we have a, from Natasha Hall Chase, she says, yes. Garrett helps so much. Beautiful feelings. He also helps show you how to become who you are meant to be. Yes. So in this aspect, well, I'll speak from a, um, from the Sasquatch awareness. When okay. the Sasquatch came into my life, you know, it was through Kiwoni Lapsaritis when he um, came to my booth and all of a sudden I'm seeing these huge beans behind him. And just as I see them, he's like, oh, yeah, the Sasquatch are with me right now. And I'm like, you don't say. <laughs> and then one of them just happened to step behind me, and it was my guide. His name is Uniac. And Uniac is a white Sasquatch, and he's an elder. And what he shared with me is that his name means easy going. <laughs> about him but there's also a clown about him too <laughs> and uh so this initial introduction had provided um words he had started to share some words and one of these words that he shared was is pronounced unan ki unan ki and what this means is the unan is the, the all encompassing all encompassing like the all encompassing all the source nan means here within this placement and he was pointing to his heart 
here within the placement and then key has always been. So the almighty cosmic all has always been within. And what I've learned and more or less, you know, kind of muggle fight it, as I call it. (laughs) I, 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 I've defined it the definition of cosmic starlight. So the cosmic starlight has always been within us. And we were just, Mm -hmm. just behaving. I know. (laughs) It's like, okay, so you have this cosmic stardust. What are we going to do with it? You know, how do we go about utilizing this energy? Well, create something. Yeah. And, but before you can utilize it and before you can create something, you got to remember, hello, you got to remember it was always there. And so, you know, when the healing comes and the awareness comes, that's when we clean all that gunk up. We clean it up. We help you remember who you are. We help, we encourage you to be who you are, to embody who you are. And then now you can make the change and now you can go about having a beautiful adventure and having fun while you're here on this planet. So it doesn't have to be so heavy, you know? Right. Shift happens, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. It's like time for more giggle juice, Gary. A little <laughs> serious here. <laughs> a little bit here. It's like, <laughs> oh, wow. So um, let's see. Where should we go from here? Um, I know people want to know about you, too, and I know they want you to speak your languages. So whatever your heart says that would be for the, our, the utmost for our listeners now, what would like to come through? and Okay. So um, we have uh, several different groups who are here right now, and what they are wanting each of all listeners, who those who are in this broadcast, we are you, you are I, we are one. To blow your mind, to give you an idea for your human part of your being, we are your future, we are your future Selves. So we embody the future, the future timeline, which each of you who are moving toward, a greater understanding, a peaceful understanding, a happy understanding. We are you. We are you. We are, you. We are your future. Okay, this the sun. This is the resonance in which we carry. We are illuminating the frequency high. So sound. For each of you are holding a heaviness now encumbering this density of the planet. If you could imagine now, take that moment, to be in true utopic vision, true utopia, where truly everything is in pure form, true everything is in light form, truly everything is in oneness and love, Yekamandan unconditionally getuko ayanikitera. This is what we are working and encouraging you to embody. Yes, tan. This is what you are working towards. Ekera kandere kekera mon yenan steye eter sosoyakan ekia mandere kenyan nerasason. It all resides within your heart. Ekera kamakayeshun. So allow yourself. This frequency of the heart resonance, ekistia kandereton, to vibrate at its full capacity. Yenemetera san, de terekekyon. Whew. So Barbara, that message that just came through, um, this comes through occasionally, um, for, uh, groups or class kind of settings. And what, what this group is, is us. This is our future selves who came back in this current timeline to re- basically give a message back to our being at this time you know talk about time travel yeah yeah so that's what they're uh they're sharing and encouraging us they're basically being our cheerleaders right now and we need the cheerleading sometimes we really do all yes. of us do all yes. the time. We'll, just, we'll just do that human pyramid and see how well we can do it <laughs> 
Yeah, so um, it's pretty cool to have that, the collective. You know, a lot of times they just go about the collective. So it's like the future part of our beings, the future us coming back at this time to encourage us to be the best that we can be. It's much more easier when we're not hindered by the old patterning. And this is a, a frequency now that is coming in from a system of Siana, um, which is about 1,327 light years from the planet is what they're saying. Siana is the name of the system. What is the name of the system again, Garrett? Siana. Siana. That's beautiful. So with the C sound, so Siana. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's kind of like we don't buy that that we're from around here, you know, kind of, you know what I mean? Kind of like that, right? Don't buy it, right? Well, you know, and and it's it's hard to kind of phantom um from the human perspective like when you think quantum and multidimensionality we are all you know the true notion of oneness so we have aspect of us that is arcturian and pleiadian we have aspects that syrian we have andromedan but then there's all these other star nations that haven't even begun to come into our awareness and that are opening up. So that's why the shift in frequency, the shift in language. <sighs> so wow. there's another system uh, we that have. That makes me really happy. Yeah, it's the Camorians. They're saying ka more ends. I know them. <laughs> yes, I think these are part of your crew. <laughs> so like, hi, sister. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who needs a Mars Matini when you can have a Camorian, right? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Like, I'll take two Camorians right now. <laughs> and and a Draco on the side. <laughs> Draco on the side, all in a sippy cup. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For sure. Because <laughs> someone else is driving. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. That's exactly correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, we have a uh, let's see, we have a uh, uh, lilac Liebenstein would love to hear Draco and receive a message from my beloved dragon. Arketanste the Liebenstein te ketonduri ki kendisia yenon sto ya kama ye ketu uto ya sandere kinga no to ya. Kotoya handia se singa na dari ki kua dearest dearest brother aya tondo ya Leibenstein you do not realize the kaya tan sto the frequency kwande singani etere otoya of your individual family clan your name Leibenstein tan ste yakanda is a frequency that is a direct Connection to the Drekin the Koya Kandestia, the Tokoya Kandestia, the system of the uh, dragons of the 13 planets. Drakandishia is how they are sharing with this. And they're saying that you are descended from these people, from, um, shouldn't say people, from this dragon line. <laughs> Correction. Yonno ya kamaki, yenye 
tere sundura ketan. It is time for this reunity, for this reunifying. Keno oya kama keshti anaresan. And we are pleased, ayakiratan, that you are opening yourself to these frequencies, remembering again, ekestoyakan, our connection in from our families, from the 13 planets, Ekiteratronikin star systems, Ekiteratronikin star systems, Ekiteratronikin star systems, It's a communication, communication, communicator, Akaya Kedustonda. So they were reiterating, Laila uh, Kedustun, that it was more around your name, the family name, uh, that name that you have on there. They're basically saying for you that this name is almost has an, like an incantation, like a summoning. It's a summoning to connect with the ancestral, like really deeper ancestral uh, lineage from the Trakan Zakayeta Tomakaya. So just working with your name. In really toning it or enunciating it differently, you'll feel that frequency come through. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. How did that energy feel to you, Barbara? Oh, that one was like like a river. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a river. That one I know that one too. It it feels very uh to me. Too, it feels very regal to me. Like it's a very regal, um, um, very ancient, deep, yes. mm-hmm. um, connection to sources, like direct. Yes, and it is, um, that is one thing too about the dragons. They've been coming through real strong just in the last couple of weeks. Um, and the dragon, uh, frequency, they are also our ancestors because a lot of times when you think ancestors, you always think human ancestors, right? But the dragon lineages goes beyond, beyond. I mean, they were one of the first beings that came here onto Earth, onto this uh, planet. And um, they're our ancestors, too. And so when you have that kind of raw, primordial, direct and power energy that comes through, it actually makes people very nervous. Mm -hmm. And so that's where this misconveyed, misrepresentation, misconstrued um, awareness around the dragons is that people kind kind, kind of like get, they get judged. They judge them. You know, and they start to affiliate it with negativity and shadow. But in reality, that's just their language. That's just how they speak. And, you know, you can't be in that judgment. And if you're in that judgment, then that's where the more direct communication will come through because it has to blaze through that judgment and say, this is who we are. So if our ancientness (laughs) makes you uncomfortable, then we're doing our job. We're breaking all that layer I would think that they just have so much wisdom yes. to offer us it's it's that they even have our attention it's like you know you know yeah. it's like I'm really grateful for it you know yeah. and that's where the inner child comes into play you know because we're taught um, as children that that everything is not real it is makeably because it's not tangible But in reality, you know, the children in their true form, in their natural intuitive state, they can see beyond, you know, this dimension. They can see into other interdimensionalities and, you know, they, they can see these beings. And so when we're in that purity, when we're in that inner child frequency, that's where, yes, you can have this communication with your dragon, but you won't feel fear. You'll feel like that curiosity and you'll feel like yes this is home yes i understand this is my heart yes this is me and i am you and so therefore that's where that harmonization starts to take place because really you know the dragon intensity it it operates at a very 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 high higher dimensions and they have to bring themselves down a little bit in order to match the frequency here on earth and here with us it, I felt like I went on their spaceship while you were talking. Oh yeah, you can ride them. We've been I've been sharing um 
individuals too uh, to reconnect with their dragons. And we, a lot of the times we we reconnect with them from a different um, awareness, like from a different planet or from a different a dimension. And many of us have been dragon riders. We've been connecting with them. You know, they're like our first hatchling. We established the bond, you know, so that depiction like with the movie of Aragorn was very much catered to how the back in the day, you know, the dragon riders – Establish that unity and the harmonization with with their dragons, and they go about doing all sorts of fun stuff. You know, they travel to different planets, they different to assist peoples in different ways, and so this is all those awarenesses and teachings that are now now coming back as part of the ascension. It's coming back into conscious awareness. There's a differentiation when it comes to conscious versus subconscious. Subconscious, like, you know it's there, but you don't believe it or you don't have the validation. Conscious awareness is when you really know it's there and you get the validation and like, holy heck, I'm responding to this frequency, to this dragon language that is coming out. So now I'm bringing that into your conscious awareness. And so all of that is all part of the ascension. It's all part of this progression moving forward. And that's when the real happy hour starts, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> dragon juice. I'll, say, I'll take two dragon juice, a shot of dragon fire, yeah. and yeah. I'll be good for tonight. <laughs> Tasha Hall's Chase says she has her sippy cup, and Gina Palmer says she has her squash sippy cup with oh, her. Nice. Yeah, we can't forget so, squashies. <laughs> all joining in, and so um, we do. I right before Natasha has a question, but um, um, we had someone ask earlier, and I can't seem to get back up to it. She would like for you to talk about lion beings, and you know, I have Sekhmet in the back of me, and. I had quite of an experience with her and, and wrote a book about her and this whole thing. And so I have a connection with the lion beings. And so I'm glad she asked that question because that's a good question for me too. Yeah. So, so um, that yes, definitely. So the lions are Lyrians, as they're called, the Lyrians. They're one of the most uh, here in our galaxy, Milky Way. But also pertaining to this universe, and when I say this universe, I mean this current timeline that's operating right now. The Lyrians have been here from the get-go. Like, they're one of our most ancient ancestral star, star elders. They were uh, responsible for the creation of humanity. So they're kind of like an overseer, like a governing um, source, a governing body that is uh, a way showing, you know, how the human development, the human, because the human body, the human DNA structure and the human kai's make aspects is all been contributed from different star uh, sections like different star um, energies and so the Lyrians are the ones that had over so uh, over saw the progression so they tweak this here tweak that there oh there's some new DNA let's bring that in let's go ahead so they're kind of like almost if you were to think of um prime creators when it comes to the human development and the human beings, the Lyrians are very much responsible for this. So they're a very ancient race. Ancient. Yeah, they're 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 pretty intense too. If oh, you're not yeah. looking for them. <laughs> yeah, you feel that, don't you? <laughs> yes. <You're> like, Hi. <laughs> I just felt the ship right there. <laughs> yep. Now you're on their ship. So we'll wow. take the Syrian pie to go. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was really good. I can feel it in my – it's like I have hair on my body, you know, like right. like that. It's all standing up. Yep. Electric. It's electric. That's the word. Yes. Very raw. Very intense. Very intense. Yeah, 
Enyamu, Hany Nyamu, Nyan Nyamu, and the Nyanuma, Yinyamu, Goyan Yamu, Nyar Nyaduma, Yinny An, Yinyomu, Hany Nyan, Yinyomu, and the Nyanya, Mua Ninya, Yinyua, Mumua, Yinya, Ningamu, Moyan Yam, Minyamu, Mumman Yam, Yinyangua. So this being very much in tune to Lyran, is talking about um, utilizing tonality. So uh, working with the frequency of tonality. Um, so going along the lines of the A-E-I-O-U, when you're toning that A-E-I-O-U, A-E-I-O-U, when you do that, so the song starts to automatically come as a result. And so this Lyrian being is talking about uh, more or less reminding us to work with not just the structural, like understanding the structural component of the individual word, but more really um, going beyond that structure and moving into the fluidity, the fluidity of the word itself. So going beyond, beyond. So the tonality is very much um a, like a key marker, ikirasun. So when you think of earthly languages like French and Spanish and Portuguese, you, you notice that individuals have an accent, right? So they have an accent when they're trying to speak English. So what he's sharing is that the same thing is that when we're speaking Lyrian, there is an accent in like the way I was speaking it. And then that accent changes because now I start to tonali- ton- tonalize it a little bit, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like you get in the zone with it. Yes. In between, yes. It, it's a connector. It connects all of it, right? Yep, yep, exactly. Yep, exactly. So when you're in that zone, then you're like, you're just like in a whole nother realm. And so you're harnessing and accessing that point of view, that part of you that is Lyrian, you know. And this is one of the things that the star elders, star uh, languages, um, you know, when I'm teaching the introduction to star language, I'm really trying to emphasize to everybody that we have all of it in us. It's all in us. And it's all in our auric feel and how we harness it. It's a matter of just turning it back on. So there's all these different tools, you know, and awarenesses that are out there that can, that can assist with that. And so that's why they gave that structure around the vowels, you know, accept who you are, energize, and everything is energy. It's you, eyes for the inspiration, the I, the inspire, inspire, like inspire. I inspire, inspire when you're in that frequency, then the outcome is the all, which is oneness, you know, and then the unifying and unity, those two is all comes together. So when you tone the A-E-I-O-U, then it trains the mind to just surrender to the process and then boom. Your language comes out, and you're staying in that zone. And as long as you're not judging yourself or comparing yourself, then the language will just come out with much more ease. Thank you for that. And so, so for, for me, I'll speak for myself, I guess. <laughs> the self critic, the self critic would come out and say, what the frack? You know, it's kind of like, you, where you want to do it and you're thinking about doing it, maybe you'll do it and am I meant to do it or can I do it? And you know, all the should coulds, all that self critic. I know if I think that sometimes, I bet other people are thinking that too. Oh so. yeah. And what I tell individuals is that the minute you think that thought, the minute you start telling yourself that you're making this up or you start critiquing and saying, what the heck am I saying? It stops. You come out of the zone and you're like, ah. Ah, you're like, darn it. Why did it have to go there? You know, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's easy for you to get back into that space of surrender. And the most easiest way that you can go about doing that is as though you're talking to a baby. So you go back into that heart resonance, into the inner child, that playfulness, and then boom, you start speaking it again. Wow. So maybe I'll try on my dog first. Oh, yeah. Dog's going to look at you. Uh-huh. 
Because <laughs> it's unconditional. I can't do anything to screw up, right? Oh, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know. you'll know you screwed up, Barbara, if the puppy goes running. <laughs> His gray hair turns black or something, you know, or, or his curly hair goes straight. Then, right. You know, like, exactly. Or he just opens his eyes and gives you that, like, look in the eye, like, oh, my God, who's this person? <laughs> what did I do wrong on the last planet I was on? <laughs> How did I end up with this human? <laughs> yes. Oh, man. <laughs> they told me it would be in the assignment, but I, I didn't think so until I got here. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. So we're we're one minute from break. Okay. So what we're going to do at five fifty six is we're gonna take a break until six oh four. Okay. And during this time that's Revolution Radio can do their little commercials and helps keep the lights on and that sort of thing. Oh perfect. So what we're gonna do is gonna get a, a refill, I'm gonna get my yes. shots and I'm gonna go yes. get more giggle juice. Perfect. Yes, we are. And so stay tuned, everyone. And thank you, Revolution Radio, for listening in. Kathleen Whitehead says, the energy that is coming from this program and this group is very powerful. So that's good. Thank you for the <laughs> validation, Miss Kathleen. Yes. Uh, really, and- the energy is you. It's, again, that message that came through from the collective was your future self saying, hi, you got this, girl. You got this, Kathleen. You can do it. Come on now. Come on, Kathleen. <laughs> and Gina Palmer says she has her Sasquatch sippy cup. Oh. And Vita Drapo says love Garrett. And maybe when we get back, uh, there's someone who asked for a message. Okay. But I, I can't get to it. So stay where you are, everyone. We'll be right back. Okay. Much love. Sounds good. Thanks, Garrett. I'm going to go grab my water. Sippy cup. Oh. And we, oh, it says love Garrett. And maybe back, uh, there's someone who asked for a message, okay. but I, I can't get to it. So stay where you are, everyone. We'll be right back. Okay. Much love. Thanks, Garrett. Grab my water. Wadia will remain a dictatorship. Oh, be quiet. Why are you guys so anti-dictators? Imagine if America was a dictatorship. You could let 1% of the people have all the nation's wealth. You could help your rich friends get richer by cutting their taxes and bailing them out when they gamble and lose. You could ignore the needs of the poor for health care and education. Your media would appear free, but would secretly be controlled by one person and his family. You could wiretap phones. You could torture foreign prisoners. You could have rigged elections. You could lie about why you go to war. You could fill your prisons with one particular racial group, and no one would complain. You could use the media to scare the people into supporting policies that are against their interests. Tune in Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Liberation Nation with Deacon John, where America comes to hear the truth. I know this is hard for you Americans to imagine, but please try Wexel Politics will be on from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Studio A. Mark Schneider will have guests on that will discuss many important topics, including the state of the world today. However, much of the show will be dedicated to the writings of Edward Albert Meyer. Let me read a short passage from one of his writings. Love is the highest principle of creation, and through it, everything exists in absolute logic. All of nature in its indescribable splendor is nothing but the love of creation, which is expressed visibly. The love of creation is everywhere, because without it, nothing at all would be able to exist. 
Please join Mark on Ohio Exopolitics from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Studio A. Transcending time and space, let us take you to the place inside your mind where thoughts divide and mysteries unwind. Join us every Monday evening right here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And you will catch the Fenton Perspective with our great host, Lorian Fenton. Come listen in as she shares her amazing stories from the past to present, along with all of her guest secrets to the future. That's the Fenton Perspective every Monday evening right here from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, only on Revolution Radio. Oh, and uh, you don't need to expect us. We're already here. Extendivite really works. Just listen to what some people have to say. Several years ago, I was developing a very uh, severe situation. I called it my flippy heart. It just was doing not good things. And I did not want to go to a medical doctor because uh, I just knew they would give me a cover-up pill. I didn't want to get onto that sort of thing at all. When I learned it was garlic and cayenne, and cayenne is a healer. It is a wonderful herb. I said, I think I'm onto something here. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be without it. It did wonderful things for me. Extendivite is only $69.95 for a two month supply of either capsules or liquid. Call now. That's 1 877 928 8822 or visit heartdrop.com. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Hello and welcome back to the Cosmic Oracle Show. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay. We are having a few technical difficulties here, but hang on, stay with us. We'll, we'll get it all worked out. We're just bringing you, uh, live, uh, from cosmic, uh, the cosmic realms, okay? So we have, uh, uh, we have the Andorians showing up and the Arcturians showing up. The, the lion beings have shown up and, uh, that's just a few of them that I remember uh, from our dear friend uh, Garrett Duncan, who will be coming back with us shortly and will continue our interview. So uh, please stay with us. I hope that uh, we get this all worked out and uh, we can continue here 
uh, with Garrett in our interview with him. And we're going to be talking back to him as soon as he gets back. So I hope we haven't totally lost him. I don't think we have. So um, let me see if I can do this. Uh, it's not letting me do too much technically. I'm trying to kind of calm down the energy, okay? So stay where you are. Um, and uh, I want to thank you for tuning in to the uh, Revolution Radio. And uh, today is uh, Friday, uh, October 25th, 2019. And uh, we do have Garrett's going to be back with us any moment. I'm back. And- Yay, you're back. Okay. Well, we totally lost uh, Facebook, but we totally are back in again. So uh, it's okay. We're going to just roll with it. So I just want to thank everyone for tuning in to Revolution Radio. And to please donate whatever you can, go to revolutionradio.com. Hit that donate button and give whatever you can. And please hang in there. I, my lighting system's going, wah, wah, wah. Hey, we got an hour. That's pretty good, don't you think, Garrett? That's pretty good without breaking stuff. That's, that's without the- breaking stuff. That's awesome, actually. We, we made a record. So here's cheers to you, bro. Yay. <laughs> I got my giggle juice cocktail on this side. So the rest, the, the rest. The show is going to be all giggly. It is. It's, I have my little French H2O going on. <laughs> oh, I see how you are. Ha, ha, ha. Ho, 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 ho. So um, for those of you um, who aren't as familiar with Garrett, which I doubt there are that many, but – could you maybe talk to them about what is a Navajo shaman? <laughs> they don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the whole idea of shamanism and shaman, the word, um, it has its origination, you know, from the peoples and uh, Siberian in Siberia, I should mm-hmm. say. And so a lot of the times that word gets uh, misconstrued, misconveyed, and you always hear from the naysayers when it comes to, oh, the Navajos don't have shamans. I'm like, yeah, we don't have shamans. <laughs> but people recognize the commonality of what that word defines and what it encapsulates, what it encompasses. And so being in this role, for me, I've always seen myself more as a facilitator, you know, facilitating the healing, facilitating the venue, being the bridge. Because when all of this happened, um, that's a whole nother three hour story there. We'll mm-hmm. save that for another time. Um, I'm not, I'm not that buzzed yet. So I'll, I won't share that with you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but when all this happened, uncle had, uh, validated for me he said that my role was different was different in this time because he indicated to me that I was to be in service as a bridge to bridge the awareness the foundational concepts from the Navajo tradition the tradition in which I embody this lifetime you know I like to look at it from the perspective of a costume so it working with the traditional ceremonies the traditional uh, um awarenesses right so mm-hmm. and then he indicated that I was supposed to learn all from others other awarenesses other um energies and to bridge to merge them and to help the people he was saying by helping them, by helping uh, the frequency of the land because they were catered to an older paradigm and older programming. Mm. And this was prior to 2012. So uncle had indicated to me that my role was different. It was out of the norm because a lot of times when individuals um, in traditionally from a traditional practitioner, from a traditional uh, perspective, from someone who's raised, you know, with the culture very, very uh, deeply. When you're gifted and your gifts come out like this, you're basically supposed to drop everything and dedicate your life in service to the people, you know, as a medicine person. Dedicate your life in service to learn and to utilizing your gift to help the people, right? 
So at that time when all this was going on for me, it was in 2008, um, I was still in Muggle World. I was still working a corporate job. And I knew deep down in my being, I said, you know what? I know I can do both. So I don't necessarily have to drop everything. I know that, you know, I can learn. I can still learn. But it was more like remembering. It wasn't so much learning. So uncle again indicated that he said, your job's different. Your role's different. And you already have the gifts. The gifts are already in you. And I said, okay, well, am I doing this right? He says, trust yourself. That's where your intuitive self is kicking in. I'm like, all right, got it. Um, and so that's that, you know, when I look back at that time, it provided a good foundation. It provided a good solidarity for me, you know, coming with this a galactic awareness and Sasquatch awareness. It's a good anchor. It's helped anchored me into this role and anchored me into this planet. So, you know, because everybody's human, everybody's 3D, even though, yeah, I talk galactically. And yes, the Sasquatch is real and all that. Right. But you still have the indigenous face that's there. And one of the things that the star nations have indicated is that the indigenous peoples of this earth have mastered the frequencies of earth. And so therefore, that's why a lot of star beings and star seeds, they end up resonating and harmonizing with the indigenous ways, with the indigenous traditions, because they're here to learn just as much as we would like to go back, you know? Mm-hmm. And so from that perspective, in for me, you know, having that as a good foundation, it helped me understand, you know, the earth from a earthly view of it all, you know, mm-hmm. and it provided the tools that were necessary and still, you know, that I still harmonize with a lot. And so I always reverberate back it, it to me. When I, you know, I can speak star language all I want, but when I go back to the land and I'm participating in a ceremony or listening to it, I could really, it really anchors me, it really helps me embody back in my human part of, of me, of my being. Mm-hmm. And so in this role, now it's like, okay, come on, people. I want you to come on to the ship, you know, but a lot of the times the people are not quite there. And then this is just everybody in general. They're not quite there yet. And unfortunately, you have to make the decision and establish boundary and say, okay, well, who are you willing to work with? Mm -hmm. A lot of the times, you know, with the traditional aspect, you're supposed to dedicate your life to be of service. But that's where the rebel part of me kicked in and said, you know what, Grandma? Why is it that we don't do this? How come we don't do this? Because part of the tradition has some fear-based mentality around it. And they they utilize that energy of fear as a catalyst to control. Mm -hmm. And that was part of my being up growing up is that I, I, I disagreed with that. I was like, Grandma, you know, how come you don't do this? You don't do it for that reason. You don't do it for this reason. You don't do it. And then finally you're like, but why, Grandma? Why, 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 why? And then she's like, oh, you just don't ask questions. And then you would be like, okay, that's it. We're done. Um, Grandma doesn't know. She just doesn't know. Why can't you just be upfront with me and say you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And get frustrated. So a part of me has always been, in a way, that misfit and that rebel, which, of course, is correlated to the Heyoka energy. So the Heyokas get thrown into that that category of misfits and rebels and the rejects, you know? And so... The weird, the weirdos. The the weirdos, weirdos, exactly. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. But it was necessary, you know, it was a necessary part of our being and our growth. So, you know, I still do my best to honor the tradition. But when I go back down there, a lot of the times the people are not quite ready to hear me especially talk about these things. You know, I go out there and talk about Sasquatch and they freak out like, you know, like my mom, she's scared to death to go up to the mountains by herself because of that reason. And and I was like, Mom, but you don't understand, you know, you don't you know, you don't feel it. You're so traumatized and we got to clean that up, but you're not quite there yet. So I was like, all right, fine. You know, just I'm just not going to even go there. So. Unfortunately, you know, in this line of work, we have to have that boundary setting and really allow ourselves to 
work with who's ready to work. And I always put it out there for the Star Nations and say, you know, I'm here to be of service and I'm glad to see the beautiful transformations that take place. But please only send me those who are ready. And when I do that, sure enough, they come and boom, they get their Navajo facelift and they all look nice, young and beautiful again. (laughs) Right? And and you learn so much too. We all learn from each other so much, right? Yeah, that's, exactly. It's that's not, the cool know, part. Definitely. And I have to be open to that too, because if we're all one, then somehow, some way, this experience or whatever it is that that person is going through that's sitting in front of me, it's also reflecting a part of me that also needs to clean that gunk up. So let's do this together. Let's take responsibility, you know, for ourselves and do the best that we can to neutralize it out of our feels. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a uh, Natasha Hall Chase. Oh, there's Tasha again. She's just got to get in there. Oh, she's in there. (laughs) She says, I'd always love a message. Uh, Just saying. (laughs) Behave yourself. (laughs) <laughs> I can I can tease Tosh like that because she's a Hayoka, so she gets it. <laughs> she does, she does. And a Catholic Whitehead said things started happening for her in 2008. Also, mm-hmm. is this a significant time frame? Well, I, you know, actually, I have heard from other intuitives and other individuals who are, you know, in the healing modality role um, that 2008 was, you know, very much a significance for them in that time. Like a lot of individuals had received their, you know, quote unquote, spiritual awakenings during that time. Um, for me, it was it happened on the 27th day of the 20 of my 27th year here on the planet. Oh. And so it was what they called, uh, what do they call that? A golden year or something like that. Oh. And um, when a that was. Year. A what? A good year. A good year, right? Exactly. <laughs> the good year. But it was when I turned 27 during that whole week on my birthday on January 27th. That's when all this transformation and this energy was coming in. My crown was opening up and I was dreaming things. I was dreaming about the future. I was connecting with my nephew before he was even born. He was telling me a lot of stuff. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Something different is happening, you know? And so it was a very uh, significant time in the aspect of trusting and knowing that something special was going on. And when I reflect back at that time, I always do a lot of, and this is important for the listeners to hear too, is that it's important for us to go through a self-reflection period. I usually do it twice. One Once is one time around my uh, birthday. And then the second time is around my nephew birthday because both of these dates are very significant to my growth. And a lot of times what I do in this reflective period is I always kind of honor myself in the sense of, wow, this is where you've gone. This is how many people you've helped. What has happened, you know, on a personal level? What, what, what happened from the time frame of last year's birthday to now? You know, how many did invitations that you get to go on and how many crazy Hayokas have you met? So. <laughs> You know, that's that opportunity for us to kind of pat ourselves on the back and say, hey, this is why you came back to Earth. So good job. Keep moving forward. So this self-reflection in that regard is important for us. And especially when it comes to the egoic mindset, we kind of, you know, like you mentioned, Barbara, you said that very humble. Yeah, that humbleness is there. And Every now and then, what spirit says, it's okay to be a little selfish. It's okay. You know, it's okay to go ahead and utilize that word they call power. (gasps) Oh, my God. Don't say that, Garrett. Don't say that out loud. It's very catchy. Powerless? (laughs) Yeah. Powerful. Oh, my God. Say Say on. Yeah. (laughs) Power to the people. Uh, Yep. Exactly. (laughs) 
closer. You know, because we've been there, we've done that, we know better. So I tell a lot of people is that, you know, you've gone through the dark night of the soul or you've gone through this shadow part of your being and you've transcended that and you needed to go through, but now you're honoring it because it brought you here. And you look back in this reflection and say, guess what? You passed. You're amazing. Look what you accomplished, you know? Yeah, it's it's like initiation after yeah. one after another after another. Ano- after oh another, God, another, I know. Another. Tell me about that. another initiation. Say, geez, when is this going to stop? Right? <laughs> it's like, hey, I need a vacation. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. And I know. sometimes we do that quiet part, like you're saying, where you the reflection part is that where we get to have time for ourselves, right? Yes. What you're yes. saying. It's such an important part because we're so conditioned to keep busy and to stay working mm-hmm. and to consume and mm-hmm. whatever all that other stuff is. Mm-hmm. But really just take time and check in, right? Yep. And one of the things I've been sharing um, in the last couple of days is to really, you know, we're givers. I know we all are. We love to give. and But it's also important for us to receive. So if we are giving love unconditionally, we must also recalibrate that programming to allow ourselves to receive love unconditionally. Give love, receive it back. When you're in that frequency, then the harmonization takes place. You're in a good harmonic resonance. And so this is one of the premise and emphasis that the star nations are really sharing with us to be in that harmonization of our heart. So that's where the true embodiment of who we are, the human part, the star part, our male part, our female part, a warrior part, our nurturer part, our compassionate side, our boundary setting side. When we come into a good harmonization, then we're always going to be at the right place at the right time. Otherwise, we'll continue to attract that lesson and then it you know, fulfills that missing piece and then you're like, oh my God, when is this going to stop? And then you get frustrated. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So grace. A little grace. Yep. A little bit a little of grace. grace feels good. So we'll have the the zippy cup with some grace. There you go. <laughs> I'll have a sippy cup with a shot of grace. Yes, on the side. <laughs> on the side. <laughs> and hold the salt. <laughs> hold the salsa. <laughs> hold the salt. <laughs> It's getting hot in here. I know. See, that giggle juice is kicking in. The clowns have arrived. Yep, yep, whoop, whoop. Yep. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Crystal Legend says, please do come to Florida. Oh, and Sarah, you says, let your freak flag fly. (laughs) Well, Florida yeah, is in the house for sure. Get down, stay at Terra. So Sara and Crystal are both in in the Tampa area. Um, I get a sign, and I definitely know for a fact that what happens is when spirit. You know, when I receive my validations and I get my synchronicity as far as next placement's concerned, it always comes in twos. So when individuals say Florida here or they're showing you stuff, oh, Florida's in the house, and then you have immediately validation again, another Florida connection. I'm like, all right, seriously, we need to look at this, you know? And so then I just put it back to, okay, thank you guys. I acknowledge that. So now let's bring that into further manifestation to go about doing, you know, go out manifesting this, you know, however it is that it needs to do so. So then I, that's how I work with the guides, the helpers, you know, I call them the teams. So right, there's, right. they're the marketers. They're the ones that tell Garrett where to go. They're my cosmic travel agents. <laughs> yeah. So you have the VIP pass. Right. The VIP. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Multi pass. The multi pass. Yeah, exactly. I know. I love that. That multi pass. And you know that movie? Yeah. That, I love that movie. You know, 
Yeah, and you know when she starts speaking, that's a star language. What she yes, says, right? You know, so all those frequencies are coming through. And I was just talking about this yesterday in my life that one of the messages that we received, it was actually on our way to the Sasquatch conference with the Chinos. Um, we got a message from another star being who was waiting for us at um, Starbucks actually. And um he was given guidance to wait for us because he had to tell us some things. And this, you know, random human stranger, but we got pulled in there and we're like, we got to go talk to this dude. And what he indicated and reminded us of was that there's a lot of hidden messages that are coming through from our movies, from TV shows, and also in the form of songs. And so when I um, was out in Albuquerque with the Chinos, we went and watched the movie Maleficent, the second one that just came out. out. Oh, my God, Barbara, you have to watch it. You're going to get so much validation and awareness. So I was really promoting that on my Facebook Live yesterday because I was just remembering that time when this star being said to us that, hey, we're coming through in messages through the movies. And I'm like, there we go. I'm like, perfect, you know. So a lot of the times these messages are coming in through um, our awareness. Well, like, we don't even know, you know, from the conscious awareness. And all of a sudden, you're like, why does that song keep playing in my head? Or why does that song keep coming up? Well, if it's coming up twice and then three times a charm, you probably really, really, really want to pay attention because there is a message in there for you. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to see that. I look exactly. good in black, so I could relate. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a Maleficent party. Yeah. We all get to dress up. Yeah, I love dressing up. That's always fun. <laughs> So yeah. Vita Drapo says hearts and and laughter and Jim Forsythe just joined and she says hello hey Yoka Lol yes and then we had something else um is that so, you ever heard of a, a Hayoka dragon yeah yeah it looks cool so, well Hayoka dragon is definitely Vida so you just look at her and she starts giggling like no <laughs> You like you can't be in the same space. She's probably doing it right now. Oh, I bet, she is. I bet she is. Like you just look she at each other and you're just sitting there giggling, and then of course that's when you get kicked out. <laughs> that's when my light keeps going on and off too. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> Um, there is a message for Vida actually now that I'm tuned into that frequency. I'm going to give this to her real quickly. So it's a reunion back with her dragon of fluidity. So the Rakatera son, the dragon of fluidity. So water, get a son, serpent. So that's for you, sister. He's just reiterating his love for you and connection. He's very happy for your reunion. Love that. You know, something you were talking about earlier about how you teach classes on for people to star speak. Yeah. Yes. You, yeah. When's your next one? Um, sign up. I mean, I could certainly post it because, um, yeah. with the classes, you know, it's very simple when it comes, and that's just my method. I try to keep it simple. I try not to overcomplicate it all, you know, not too much paperwork or signs. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so with the AEIOU, what we do is we do some encoding as far as activation. So there's a star on uh, galactic activation that we provide, that I provide, and it sets that into motion. And then um, the rest of it is just more about practice. Um, and so a lot of the times with these classes, um, we do it in person or we, I've, I've done it over also through a zone conferencing, zoom conferencing, I should yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. And everybody um 
the one time that I did in a huge group setting, there were probably like 32 people. Mm-hmm. And uh, after doing all these exercises, only two, 30 of them were speaking it by the end. Boom, 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 boom. And the other two were just in that little, they're so close. Mm-hmm. And I just had to get over that little hump. Stop judging yourself. Stop judging yourself. Just let it go. And, it, you know, they were so close. And so the methods around how to speak your star language, it certainly revolves around the vowels. So, again, you know, going back to A-E-I-O-U. Um, so we'll be doing tonalities with that. We tone them. Um, and then there's an actual activation phrase because what I'll do is I'll give you a handout. So I'll email all participants a handout. And then we do these exercises together. And really what it is about is more or less tricking the egoic mind, basically just to surrender into that utmost connection of the heart. And then from there, the fluidity of the language starts to come out. So I'll post the class for probably yeah. next week for sure. I would love that. I, I will definitely let... Everyone here on my end, no, I would share it. I know all of our people would share. I'd love to have, have yeah. you. Who would take that class? Oh, that, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's a warning. No. <laughs> well, yeah, you really don't need, you know, we'll, you know, don't need the giggle juice. We'll just get high off frequencies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure we're not driving when we do it. Oh, know? yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Hey, the Chinos just joined us. So, okay, now we're going to take it to a whole other level. Oh, another level. The Chinos are on the ship. The ship (laughs) has landed here on Earth, all aboard. Our first stop is Saturn. Ooh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) For our Saturnies. No warp 44. We're going to warp 54, 64, (laughs) 74. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, oh, let's see. Where do we want to go? Let's see. You know, I'm feeling Lemurian and I have no idea. Ah. So. And that <laughs> kind of makes sense. You know, That's again, it? when I was emphasizing the movie Maleficent, there are images of Lemuria and the Raketuro, the Lemurian frequencies around the tunnels that are Tondore Tera. Lemuria Terre Sondore Mindire Tar Lemuria Terre Tingo Nodori. So the ancient energies, the uh, new Lemurian energies are rising to the surface. The sacred sites are starting to come into awareness on your news agencies. Many of you, many of us, have been Lemurian. Lemuria Reterason was in first, was here first prior to Atlantis. Lemuria Kereteton, the colonies were established. Kereteton, were very uh, harmonized. A lot of uh, songs, a lot of tonality with their languages. One of the listeners now that I'm zooming into, um, their Lemurian frequency is coming forward. And this frequency is specifically catered around their work with the dolphins at that time. And that are showing me that in that lifetime when they were Lemurian, they were establishing that harmonic communication, the sonar technology that they were developing together. So the dolphins volunteered, like they volunteered their emissaries to work with the Lumorians to have this more uh, harmonic resonance. And it was like a differentiation like now from a human side of things. It's almost like you train the animal, you command the animal, right? But the Lumerian frequency was all about working in harmonization with the being. You ask it to be of service. You ask it to work in harmony with you. So this individual that is coming forward from that Lumerian lifetime, this is just that sound frequency. Again, working with the harmonics, harmonics of the dolphin energies. 
rendere chi quiera e che era a mondo di chi quiera cambiare son the tonalities che era a camo quella working with the frequencies of the 432 ra che san the 528 che tu resi san di chi tira so hearing these harmonics opens that awareness back for you a cambiare se san um, they're not relaying too much specifics about the name but they're just indicating that someone really has uh, this message that is coming through for them so they'll feel in their heart they'll remember e che stanzi di nera tonda that's mm-hmm. beautiful mm-hmm. Ooh. like I'm waterfalls a, I was going to say I'm on my bus now I'm, I'm good <laughs> We're on the party bus now. Sure. Like I'm feeling my <laughs> Wait, bus. I lost my hat. I put I, my hat somewhere. I don't know where. I'm feeling my buzz. I'm good right now, Barbara. I'm good. <laughs> it's like, ask me if I want another shot. Oh, no, thank you. I'm good. I'm right there. <laughs> I'm feeling it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um um one of the sharing awarenesses too that has been really coming to my attention is that Lumo- new lamoria is rising and it's continuing to rise in frequency and so the energies around hawaii uh the islands are encompassing this new vibrancy and many people are going there and what they're finding is that they're going there but they're only there for a short amount of time They thought they were going to be living there for a long time or establishing holistic communities, you know, things along those lines. And then all of a sudden they're coming back to the mainland here on Turtle Island and they're trying to figure out, well, Garrett, um, I thought I was supposed to be there and I was there, but now I'm back here. So I'm kind of confused. I was like, well. Basically, you did behind the scenes work and behind the scenes works means that is that they're harnessing and activating the new Lemurian energies. They're connecting with it, but they're bringing those frequencies back here to to Turtle Island, you know, to North America and the lands here. So it's elevating. That's why with the energies that was coming through. It was more around that heart resonance, very soft, very relaxed, but there was also kind of like um, a slight uh, intensity about it, but it was more of that really strong compassion, really being in that compassionate heart, the holy heart, the holy fire of heart. Coming into the harmonics of the resonance of heart frequency for this is the way the way to carry us forward expanding 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 expansion 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 expanding 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 so they're taking these harmonic resonance frequency of new lamoria and then they're going out where you know doing their normal everyday thing and they're um, planting the seed but they're doing it more from a subconscious subconscious level and so this is kind of to just bring into conscious awareness that some of us you know when we're really connected like this Sometimes we have an understand, oh, we're just going to the conference or, oh, we're going to meet this person. Yes, we're going to do this workshop and yes, we're going to do this class. We're going to meet this person, right? But then there's always this behind the scenes work. There's always behind the scenes work, as I call it. And universe and spirit guides us to specific areas to do this work, you know, and so... From the behind the scenes, the new Lemurian energies are now continuing to be anchored here on North America. And and sometimes those places can be surprising where you go, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Let's go home. <laughs> What's here? You know, yeah. Like, oh. yeah like, Starbucks. Like, like you wouldn't expect it in Starbucks, but if you're open to it and you're tuned in, the vibrations never lie, right? You're just oh, God. there. Yeah. Because it was like the minute, you know, I'm there with the Chinos and we just walk into the store and I felt that star dude sitting right there and I look right at him and he's doing his language and I see his movements with his hands and I'm like, 
Okay, that's where we we're going to meet. Okay. And I'm like sitting there and I get my coffee and then I feel the guides go talk to him. I'm like, excuse me, can I have my coffee first? Jeez. <laughs> That reminds me, that's where I met you the first time was over coffee. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Oh, snap. Small world. Sheila, you had the coffee. Oh. So, so we were instant friends. Of course, because we spill coffee on each other, I'm sure, because yeah, we're feeling we so hard. <laughs> we had our priorities straight. Though. Oh, that's right. We had our little coffee machine. That's yeah. right. I remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I go, who is this guy? Yeah. I know. It's like, oh, yeah, you don't want to be talking to Garrett when he's not had his coffee yet, when he's still asleep. No. Yeah, you keep no. with the morning. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, get in line, get in line. Okay, I'll be your barista. Sure, two shots of hazelnut. Okay. <laughs> that was beautiful. Really beautiful. Wow. I'm feeling really good. How about you? I am too. I am too. Definitely for sure. I think uh, love <laughs> all the messages that needed to come through for the audience that get the stone that I get out there in that good harmonic resonance. They get the eta and uh, they're definitely you know needing to hear their validations as well as wanting to get their illuminating illumination. You know the frequency and remembering that they're back in the heart space. And, you know, they're receiving love and they're giving love and they're giving them themselves permission to do so. And that's important. It is. It is. And Steve Ward just joined us. And Sarah, you says, yes, her and Michael just saw the movie last night. Oh, yay. Good. <laughs> and Chris Leggett yeah. says hello. Yay! And I said, I get a, I, um, I always like to tell individuals, they say, okay, you guys got homework. They're like, oh shoot, right? Garrett's giving out homework. I'm like, yeah, Garrett's giving out homework, right? They're like, uh oh. I'm like, uh-oh. all right, so this is your homework. Go watch some stuff. <laughs> right? I give fun homework though. I give homework to watch movies because there's a lot of awarenesses and a lot of messages that come through. Mm-hmm. And so I'm glad that Sarah did her homework. I'm sure she saw a lot of validation as to what I was talking about. And um, for those of you who haven't done your homework, I expect that five-page report on Monday, okay? <laughs> Double space, 12-point font, and you're just <laughs> figure out, okay, definition of magic, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Can we do that in Invisible Ink? <laughs> You could, but I want to make sure that I, when I pour my giggle juice on it, that it comes up. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm thinking of something and it's coming, so I'm going to just, and it's out there. Are you surprised, right? Oh, no. <laughs> so it, for some reason, I keep getting the question, ask him about the fae, about the fairy oh. fae. Well, I no, just no. feel them. They're just yes. been here since since you got here, and I don't know what that's about. So, um, yeah, that's uh, my okay, Akira Sonsoya. So this is uh, the elemental elder that usually comes through whenever there's questions about the elemental kingdoms. So I'm just gonna let him speak. <laughs> Andorri si sian de rekiturri sing and the returi. Yanander turri meteri sander to turri singer duri. Yander turri. Harry tur singar is the zorro motori sander tire munda. Yanatar the sundari terri sundari terri mari terri motori. Arringar yamori. Arringar yaturringar is the serin zo. Arimarian Yerturin, Yandre Oritir Sundoritir Sierin Maderi, Garretorian Arretur Sander Sunda, Arretoridis Arretari Sund. So, what he's sharing is that a uniting of the kingdoms, uniting of all tribes, uniting of the, um, 
say with the fairies uh, that a thundur has been division in times past, but as part of this ascension, there are some of you who are very resonating very much to the fae, to the kingdoms of the fae. You're in human form because your job is to unite. This is the bigger work that was mentioned. And so that you have that real strong harmonization with the kingdoms of the fae and the fairies and the pixies. But you're harmonizing that frequency, you know, as a represent representative into the whole tribes, the unity. So this is what the biggest message are the thing that this elemental elder is sharing, not just particularly around the kingdom of the Fey, but they're also saying for other elemental frequencies. Um, some of these frequencies, as was mentioned, the Minihunai are the little people of Hawaii, the Minihunai, also have their representatives who are in human form and that are uniting and harmonizing back with the energy of the heart space. They're harmonizing back with the lands of Hawaii. And then you have the elves and you have the dwarves and you have the gnomes and you have the other pixies. So all these different facets of the elemental kingdoms are also bringing awareness, human conscious awareness, yaturutan for their representatives in human form. So that's that part of their being that is resonating with that energy. And they are really wanting just more or less for the humans, their human, um, their human descendants to remember where they came from. And in this remembrance, the heart, etua, cannot emphasize enough. The foundation of the heart frequency connecting to all, connecting to all in unity. So this is the biggest thing that the elemental elders and kingdoms right now are, are coming forward, bringing this awareness for all of us at this time. It's, it's like a unification, right? It's like yes. this huge unification. I just see all these different lines of where everyone's been separate or had their own thing and they kept it together. And maybe they protected it and they needed to, they had to. Correct. But, but then bringing this unification together is extraordinary. Yes, exactly. And that's all part of the ascension progression as they're mentioning, it's all part of the the ascension. So we're unifying all frequencies, all tribes, all clans, you know, Sasquatch, the star nations, you have the elemental, even ancestral lines from the indigenous wisdoms, the ancient ancestors of the, all the indigenous peoples on this planet. And they're also bringing attention to our four-legged friends, the animal kingdoms, the winged ones, the swimmers, the flyers, the crawlers, the terathan, the rekoturi, retun, that is the true oneness, geratur, the establishing of relationship and the true unity of love, retun di kimikiria. So this is what we are hoping to accomplish here on this earthly domain, haritun de rikikera san, Emphasizing, emphasizing more and more and more of this expansion. For it affects all. It vibrates into all other universes that are connected, all other multidimensionality, all other parallel earths. So it's like expansion and they're coming, bringing into human human awareness of this. That's why this is a big deal is basically what they're saying. This is a big on deal. Earth, big deal because it's affecting all these other universes, all these other people, all these other star systems. So that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be a part of that elixir, right? That oh, big, yeah. Exactly. That potion. Yep, exactly. Just exactly. Big potion. exactly. We're, we're a speck in that, but we're powerful. <laughs> 
<laughs> we were just the accent that it needed, right? To make it exactly. perfect. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we tolerate you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> They only need a little bit of us, though, right? Yeah, you only need a little bit of humans. You really need. If you have too much human, it just turns bitter right after that. (laughs) (laughs) So don't add too much human in there because it gets bitter. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, we're the sweetness. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) We're the grenadine. Yeah, the chocolate coating. No. Exactly. <laughs> cherry on top. It's, or the cherry on top, right? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my God. Awesome. Okay, that was good. Yes. Uh, good stuff. Yay. 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 I, I have one more thing. Okay. Um, And I don't even know if you do this, but, I, like, do you ever, like, speak star speak the mother earth herself um i've channeled her um i've channeled gaia before now of course that was in human language but i haven't channeled her uh her higher aspect her star self um that would that would be interesting to hear um yeah. the best way to express this actually um, is a song that was given to me by the elemental kingdoms and it's a rebirthing song but it's a harmony song it's a song that also harmonizes and recreates um, like they sing this song during um, let's say deforestation happened or maybe there was a wildfire the elementals sing this song to encourage the growth and the restructuring of the plants the trees and the um, soil to restructure itself. So this is something too that they're bringing. Uh, it's an earth, it's definitely an earth song. So I'm just going to share this with, uh, with all of you. <laughs> so you get to hear cosmic karaoke in action. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yay! <sighs> Here we go. Anari, 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 Anariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariyanariy
um, um, how to, for people to get a hold of you is to yeah. go to Facebook at Navajo Illuminations. Yes. So that's please, correct. uh, find Garrett on, uh, Navajo Illuminations on Facebook and also under Garrett Duncan and that's G-A-R-R-E-T-T. D U N C A N. And do you want to leave your phone number or not with the, um, with the universe? <laughs> oh, it's on there. It's, uh, it's you know, okay. the phone number and the contact information is on the Facebook page. Okay. And cool. I also have my, uh, website, you know, www.navajoilluminations.com. And on the website, you know, you have a different, you have a lot of different uh, classes that I offer, as well as uh, several other radio interviews in which I participated in, which I speak a lot about the star languages, Sasquatch interaction, the shamanic wisdom, so a little bit of everything. So when you guys get a chance, check it out. And then also being part of the Sasquatch Speaks documentary, you get to see me in action. So if you check out the YouTube channel, you'll see me on that as well. Yeah, and and on that YouTube, it's it's Sasquatch Speaks number two or number one or um, it's Sasquatch Speaks number one. That's the one that um I have a lot of messages coming through in that in yeah. that part. That's a beautiful one. I saw that. It's awesome. What an awesome film. Yes, really. fun stuff. It is. So we went to Evita Drapo says thank you. Uh, and just everyone's just throwing their hearts everywhere. So. Yay, uh, awesome. And guys, <laughs> take advantage of the Hayoka Happy Hour special. I posted it just for you. Oh. So on the events page on Navajo Illuminations, you'll see the Hayoka Happy Hour special. Um, this can be these readings, activations, star language. It can be all performed over the phone. It can be performed via Zoom. We can do it over Facebook Messenger, over a call. So this is for you because this is, you know, if you're needing that pick me up, as I like to call it, you know, I'd love to be of service and I love to hear your validations. That's the reason why I'm here. You know, as I hear you guys moving forward in a good way, it keeps me moving forward, knowing that, you know, I'm doing my best to be of service for each of you. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Awesome. Crystal Leggett says, I love it. Been speaking light code here. Thank you for your share. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Awesome. And that she saw the movie and it was epic. So, so well, I'm gonna do my homework this weekend. That's yeah, for sure. Better, Barbara, I'll follow up with you on Monday, and I expect that report on my desk first thing. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at talking my way out of things, though, like you. <laughs> like what? Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Any commercial advertising you may hear in this program is of the sole discretion and benefit of the host of this program you are listening to. Revolution Radio does not endorse any commercial products, nor does it accept monetary compensation for on-air advertising of commercial products, nor will it ever. We are and shall remain 100% listener supported. Any product advertising on this program are considered used at higher risk, and Revolution Radio shall not be held liable for any claims or damages received from any product advertised within this program. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Take a look around, kid. What do you see? Homes being foreclosed. People working two, three jobs just to put food on the table and still drowning in debt. Don't get me wrong. This country was founded on great ideals and principles. They've all been ruined by the banks. Open your eyes to the banks that are robbing you. You know who my favorite president was? Who? Thomas Jefferson. Because he saw all of this coming and tried to stop it. He fought the banks. JFK too, and they killed him for it. The banking institution is more dangerous than an army, he said. He also said that every generation needs a revolution, Jimmy. The American dream is just that. Just a dream. War is a continuation of politics. Only by other means. Politics is a continuation of economics by other means. 
This is our bank. This is our war. And this is our plan of attack. Banks have become an essential threat to our democracy. So consider this justice. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station on the Internet. Please help support this station so this battle can continue forward. Revolution Radio! Extendivite really works. Just listen to what some people have to say. Several years ago, I was developing a very uh, severe situation. I called it my flippy heart. It was just was doing not good things. And I did not want to go to a medical doctor because uh, I just knew they would give me a cover-up pill. I didn't want to get onto that sort of thing at all. When I learned it was garlic and cayenne, and cayenne is a healer. 